Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. Twenty-seven years ago, my husband wanted a manly man dog. So we went looking for a breed. Uh, we looked at Neapolitans and I said no. He looked at a great, I wanted a Great Dane. He said no. Then we ran into a dog de Bordeaux at a rare breed show and we knew this was the breed for us. It was, it was love at first sight. We said this is exactly how our home life is. This is exactly what we like, the temperament, the personality. Great with kids, we wanted this dog. The dog de Bordeaux is a great pet. They are great with family, kids. Um, they're wonderful companions. I, I wouldn't have a home without it. My name is Angie Reed. I am the DDBSA, which is the parent club for the dog de Bordeaux. Uh, corresponding secretary. I am also on our judges education committee. I'm an AKC approved mentor and I'm also a breeder of merit. The Dog de Bordeaux is a very special breed to me. Uh, it's a very, it's a great companion. It's great with kids, family. Uh, they just really want to be with you and be wherever you are. The Dog de Bordeaux really just wants to be with you. It just is a big lap dog. It thinks it's a little dog, but it's a big dog. They just want to be cuddled. They just want to be with you. And they just enjoy doing things with you and being with you. I've stated before, I've had this breed for 27 years. I am a breeder owner handler. I have been showing for almost 20 years. I enjoy going to class, training my dog, uh, having that teamwork with us. I, all the people I've met in the show ring, at nationals, throughout the years, over in Europe, America, these are friendships that I've had forever. The Dr. Bordeaux is first and foremost a head breed. We are, that head is a trapezoid head with that expression is just that what sets us apart. Uh, when we educate our judges in judges education, we tell them to follow our acronym of hearts, which is head, expression, athletic, wrinkle, trots like a lion, and substance. And that's really what you want to see in the dog. The first and foremost is the head. Uh, the next is the expression, wrinkle, but not too much wrinkle. Uh, the athleticism. Can it move? It has to move. Uh, and, our, and our movement is, is like a lion. And then the substance, you want that bulk, uh, but not bigger. Bigger is not better. Balance and proportion with this breed is always first and foremost. The breed standard, in a male, they can be from 23 inches to 27 inches and a minimum of 110 pounds. A female can be from 22 inches to 26 inches with a minimum of 99 pounds. So again, bigger is not better. It just needs to be balanced and proportioned. We are a Mastiff breed. First and foremost, we're a Dog de Bordeaux. We're a French Mastiff. So we are cousins to the English and the Bull and the Dog de Bordeaux and the Italian. We're all in the Mastiff family. So we're not a Bulldog, but yet we are a concave dog like a Bulldog. We have a wider chest. We move like, you know, we're a little bit wider. We're not narrow here like a Whippet. We are a short muzzled breed. Uh, you want to watch that you're not too short muzzled. You want to make sure your nostrils are open so they, the dog can breathe because we are a very heat sensitive breed. Um, you know, weather like today is not bad, but you definitely do not want to leave your dog outside in the heat. The acceptable colors of a dog de Bordeaux can go from light Isabella to dark mahogany. Um, and they can be, so they can be in between that variations. There is also a black mass dog de Bordeaux. Uh, and they have to have, definitely have to have certain black in the area of the muzzle on the nose for sure. Uh, and they can be, again, light Isabella to the dark mahogany. Uh, the dog de Bordeaux was created to guard the vineyards of France. We are supposed to look scary, look dissuasive, but not be it, very companion. So when you look at it and you look at that expression, you're like, whoa. Uh, we have also been used for carting. Back with World War II, we, our numbers really, really went down. Um, 
They've been used for hunting, boar, other things, um, but really we're a guardian breed. In World War I, they were also used to pull the wounded off the battlefield. Our numbers as a breed really went down during World War I and World War II because families were working on supporting themselves and feeding themselves as opposed to the family dog. Today, the Dog de Bordeaux is a companion dog. We have also been used in therapy, uh, search and rescue. Uh, years ago, there was a dog that was actually water certified. She trained with the Newfoundland. There was actually a Dog de Bordeaux at 9-11. His name was Boomer, and he did phenomenal work during that horrible time in our history. The Dog de Bordeaux can be an aloof breed, it's kind of a little standoffish. It can also be very friendly, very outgoing. Um, Again, it is a guardian breed, so if it feels his family is being threatened, it will guard its family. It's what it's supposed to do. Uh, the Dr. Bordeaux is active, but it's not an active dog. It's not a sporting dog. We're not a herding dog. We don't need a lot of energy. You can take your dog for a good 30-minute walk. and I know mine from experience. They're done. They're good. They love, mine love to play fetch. Mine swim in our lake. The dog de Bordeaux can be aggressive. It is, it is a guardian breed. It can be dog aggressive. But early socialization, and if you just keep, I always tell all my puppy owners and people I speak to are gonna get a breed, training. You need to start training your puppy from day one. Take them to puppy kindergarten class. Take them to obedience class. Socialize, socialize, socialize. And if it's no one time, it is always no. You must be consistent with this breed. The life expectancy can be eight to 10 years. Uh, we, there have been a few dogs that have lived to 12. Uh, I think as we grow as a breed and a breed community, the more health screens we do, the more health testing we do, the more we will really strive to improve on the health of our dog. I think the longevity will definitely increase. Health testing to me is very, very important. You have to know what you have before you breed. Uh, it's, it's not an option for me, it's mandatory. I will do all my health screens prior to any breeding. I will demand that whoever I'm breeding to have the same. We want good hips, good health, good heart, good thyroid. We want all that to promote the breed longevity, to keep this breed going. I think over the last probably five to 10 years, the one that's been most coming out is a heart. As health screens improve, we're finding a lot more heart issues. You want an echocardiogram. Uh, it's now very easy to do. You can schedule with a cardiologist. A lot of dog shows have these health screens. Um, I prefer to take my dogs to my own cardiologist in my area. I've used the same one for the last 15 years and, and I trust him completely. In my 27 years, I've had only three litters. Why if I had only three litters? If I couldn't improve on the breed, I wasn't going to breed my dog. My first litter had three puppies, which was a great beginning for me as a new breeder. Uh, one of those puppies has become not only an AKC champion, but a grand champion. My next litter, I had four puppies, and three of those have gone on to be AKC champions and grand champions. And then my last litter I had, um, I've had three champions, a couple grand champions, and I was also the fortunate one to breed the first dog de Bordeaux to win a best in show. Uh, his name was Buddha. Uh, Buddha was the first dog de Bordeaux to win a best in show in AKC. Uh, that was actually a very special day for me because he won it back home in his hometown of Puyallup. So I was actually ringside and got to cheer him on. It was a very special day, lots of tears for me. The dog de Bordeaux is actually a pretty much wash and wear breed. Um, there's, you wash it, you scrub it down. I use a sponge to get really down in the hair. Uh, and you dry it off. I don't blow dry my dogs. I don't get too crazy. Um, you do want to clean the folds in its face. Um, they can collect a lot of dirt and oil and grease. Uh, you want to watch their ears. They can get, you know, they have floppy ears. They can get some yeast infections. Um, but other than that, they're a very easy groomable dog. Me personally, I feed my dog to Bordeaux from puppy adult food. I, I never feed them puppy chow, it's too much protein, they grow too fast. When your puppy is growing, you don't want it to put on more than three pounds a month. Uh, if it starts putting on too much weight too fast, you can have other joint issues, shoulders, limping, some pano, which is growing pains, which is very common in a young puppy. So you want to really watch the, the weight on the dog. You also want to feed it a good quality dog food. Uh, there's a lot of people that feed raw food. 
Uh, I feed a really good commercial grain-free dog food. That's my choice. So, but again, you really just want to make sure he has all the supplements he needs, the vitamins. I always tell people, I suggest them that they get a supplement with a hip. I, I think joint supplementation from the time they are a puppy is essential. I think it just helps their body keep everything, you know, growing like it should be. This is definitely not a dog to throw in your backyard and leave them. Uh, they are a working dog. They need to be with the people. Uh, if they are left alone out in the yard, they can start having some really behavioral and aggression problems. They, they're very social. They need their family. They need to be around their people. And plus with the heat and stuff, it's just not good. It, Weather-wise, they get too hot or if it's too cold. I mean, they don't have the cold to keep them warm in the cold. So I always say, in the house. We are a drooling breed. Some drool all the time, some drool when they eat, some drool when they drink. We are a drooling breed. If you come to my house, you will see I have strategically placed drool rags everywhere. Years ago, after we got our first dog to Bordeaux, we learned we can't have a coffee table. Their tails are perfect coffee table height, and when they swing it, there goes your cup and your food, so no coffee tables. Um, I, if you have a vase on a, on a t table, it could fall over with them running into it. So, you know, it's, it's, but most dogs, you know, you just want to make sure that there's nothing down that they can eat like a plant. You know, you got to make sure they're not going to eat your plant. So definitely like child proofing your home, you dog proof your home. Right now we're here at the Mission Circuit in Pomona, California. I am down here from Washington with my girl, Mia. Her actual name is Lorda de la Gain. I imported her from Holland from my breeder, Jan Dijkstra. This is actually my third dog I've got from him. Mia is 20 months. This is her first show she has traveled so far from. Uh, she actually showed like a trooper. I, you know, did we win? No, but you know what? I would not have asked anything different from her. She moved perfect. She stacked perfect. She did everything I want. So. I was happy with it. And plus I get to see all these great people down here. Um, I love, this is one of the things I love about dog showing is the friends I've made, seeing their dogs, reconnecting. It's, this is what showing to me is, it's the camaraderie and the friends that I make. That's what's important to me. Showing this dog and working with this dog, this breed and just training it has really opened my world to so many other breeds, so many other people. I've met a lot of people that have influenced my life that have given me great tips uh, in, I don't know, some maybe health things that I can do, some, some anything. The people I've met here have just been amazing. Uh, I encourage other people to get out and show. You don't need to hire a handler, you can do it yourself. We have fun. I love my Pacific Northwest group I show with. They, we are like family. We help each other out, we encourage each other, and to me, they are so precious to me, you have no idea. I. I they are my second family.